What's up everybody? In case you didn't know, I was one of the lucky 100 to get to experience the one plus one. In the contest, the smash the pass contest, instead of smashing my phone, I chose to donate it and it was a Moto X. Well, in return, they sent me a one plus one for one dollar and it's finally arrived. So in this video, I want to go ahead and do the formal unboxing of the one plus one as well as my first impressions. So without further ado, let's go ahead and cut open the box and see what comes inside. Now about a day or two before receiving the device, I actually got an email from OnePlus One stating that they weren't going to mail me the box, the charger, the data cable, or anything other than just a phone. If you take a look inside the packaging, you get this little card here. Pause the video and you can read it for yourself, but basically it just gives you a rundown of the company saying there's a lot more to expect in the future, that this is only the beginning, and congratulations on being one of the lucky 100. I was number 35 to win the contest. Now underneath that you actually have the phone and it's wrapped in a tremendous amount of bubble wrap. So we'll go ahead and get it off and as you can see you are left with the device itself and it has a protective sticker over the front of it so that way the screen didn't get damaged upon shipping. Now we'll go ahead and flip the phone over and give you guys a quick overview of the back or just a quick look at the back. We're going to get more into detail about the cosmetic design of this phone later on in the video so make sure you stay tuned. Now we'll flip it back over and remove off that protective coating exposing the 5.5 inch 1080p HD touch on lens display and we'll get more into the display as well later on in the video. You'll notice in the top right corner there's a barcode and I'm guessing that's how OnePlus labeled each individual device and they were able to scan it upon shipping. If you take a look at the left side of the device, you have your micro SIM card slot as well as the volume rocker which is done in a black gloss ceramic finish. On the opposite side, you have your power button which is again in that black gloss ceramic finish. On the bottom of the phone, you have your micro USB charging port, a microphone, and the dual stereo speakers, which actually sound pretty good. They're not as good as, of course, the boom sound speakers on the HTC One M8 or the HTC One, but they actually sound pretty good. On the top, you have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, as well as another microphone. Moving on to the front of the phone, if you take a look at the top portion, you have your 5 megapixel camera on the front, your proximity sensor, your LED notification light which is fully customizable, as well as your speaker grill for placing calls. If you take a look at the actual glass display though, you can see that it does not really connect with the bezel, it's a bit raised. Now I'm going to have to recommend getting a screen protector for this specific device because you get no type of lay on the table protection from the built in casing. But I will say that the touch responsiveness of this phone is great and I think that might be due to the touch on lens display. And if you look in the foreground you can actually see the LED notification light working and as I said it's fully customizable to a color of your choice. Now moving on down to the bottom portion of the front of the phone you have your capacitive buttons which consist of a menu home and back button. But with CyanogenMod you can also turn these off and have on screen buttons and these are also fully customizable. You can have four buttons, you can have three buttons and you can also change the position of these buttons. So if you want the home button on the left you can move it. Flipping the phone over you can see you have the polycarbonate white finish you have the cyanogen mod logo on the bottom you have the one plus logo towards the middle of the top you have your dual led flash you have your 13 megapixel six lens camera which has a sony sensor as well as another microphone on the back the 16 gigabyte white model which is what you see here will retail for 299 the black 64 gigabyte model will retail for 349.99 the finish of this phone is similar to the Moto X, at least the matte version, which is a fingerprint magnet. Luckily with the white version, you won't see them as much, but if you go for the black version, you're going to see fingerprints a lot. It's very, very smooth and very slick, so it's going to be kind of slippery and you're at risk of it slipping out of your hand due to the finish. Now the SIM card tray is a little bit different than what I'm accustomed to as well. It goes in upside down and it will actually slide into the phone upside down as well. Instead of being a traditional tray that you just set your SIM card in, you actually fit it in and when flipping it upside down, it will hold it in place. Now I'm using a nano to micro SIM card adapter, but it works very well with no issues whatsoever. Now before we move on to the internals of this phone and the software, let's go ahead and compare it to some other flagships. Here it is side by side with the iPhone 5S. You can see there is a huge size difference between these two phones. And again, we'll go ahead and put it next to the Galaxy S5, another flagship, and you can see the OnePlus One towers over this particular device, and the Galaxy S5 is no slouch when it comes to size. So let's go ahead and put it up to its distant cousin, the Oppo Find 7A. 
Now, more or less, they are designed exactly the same. They're almost the same width and same height. If you take a look at the back though, you can hardly see it in the video, but the Oppo has a different texturized back. It actually has better grip than the OnePlus One. The camera, flash, and microphone are also all in different locations on the Oppo, and the speaker is on the back of the Oppo while it's on the bottom of the OnePlus One. If you take a look here at this angle, you can see the Oppo Find 7a is actually thicker and it is heavier than the OnePlus One. If you guys want to see a full comparison between these two devices, make sure you hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below. After the OS and the stock apps that come with the phone, you're only left with 12.16 gigabytes of storage out of 16. If we go into about phone, you can see it is running the Cyanogen mod. And if you scroll down, it's running Android 4.4.2 KitKat, which is very impressive considering the Oppo Find 7a is not even running this. Now the internals consist of some top end specs. It has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor clocked at 2.5 gigahertz with quad core CPUs. It also has the Adreno 330 for graphics and it has three gigabytes of onboard RAM. What this translates to is lightning fast responsiveness and amazing performance. There is no task that this phone cannot handle, whether you're playing games, you're browsing the web, you're watching movies, this phone will be able to handle whatever you throw at it with specs like that. And during my 24 hours of use, it is dead on. I have not experienced any lag whatsoever with this phone. It also features Bluetooth 4.1 as well as NFC. And one thing I wish it had since it does not have a removable back is wireless charging, but it does not. The 3100 milliamp battery provided more than enough juice to get me through a full day. The device charges very slowly though. I used the Oppo Find 7a rapid charger and it took two hours to charge it from zero to 100%. Even though it may not be fully compatible with the rapid charger, that is still two hours using a normal micro USB charger. The five and a half inch JDI full 1080p HD 401 PPI LTPS IPS display with touch on lens technology is absolutely beautiful. When watching movies, viewing pictures, or going to websites, the color accuracy of this display is spot on. I didn't find too many problems with it in my 24 hours of use so far. The whites could be a little bit whiter. They're a bit like a grayish color, but overall, for the most part, the display has been beautiful. It also features Corning Gorilla Glass 3. And if you pair that with the touch on lens display, it's going to give you some excellent protection against shatters. I'm not gonna go too much into image quality or video quality with the camera as this is not my full review, but I will say from what I've seen so far and from the pictures and videos that I have taken, this is by far one of the best smartphone cameras I've used to date. The 13 megapixel six lens camera with the Sony sensor is phenomenal. If you follow me on Twitter, you've seen some of the pictures that I've posted recently of this smartphone camera. The camera app itself is basically a stock Google camera with a ton of settings. You can change the picture size from 13 megapixel all the way down to SVGA, which is ridiculously small. You can change the image quality from 65% all the way up to 100%. You can turn on and off burst mode. You can go into touch to focus duration, which is a very awesome feature. I have it set for 15 seconds, which means when you touch the screen to focus, it will hold that focus for 15 seconds. You can change the focus mode from auto to macro. There's about four different settings inside of that setting. You can change the ISO. You can change the auto exposure mode. You can do auto banding. There's a ton of features. I'm not going to go into them all because this is not my full review. Swiping to the left takes you to the video settings. You have 4K DCI, 4K UHD, and it goes all the way down to VGA. You can turn on the time lapse. You can change the video codec. You can change the audio codec. There's just a ton of settings here. It's crazy. If you swipe to the left one more time, you have your general options, such as using the power button to take a picture instead of the volume rocker, which is a different idea. You can actually use the volume rocker to zoom in instead. And for your lefties, you can turn on an option that makes it easier to use the phone if you're left-handed. The actual focusing system on this phone is very, very fast, so it's going to provide you almost instantaneous focus when touching the screen. Now there is a ton of different shooting modes. You can shoot in auto, of course. You have HDR, you have landscape mode, 
you have steady photo you have night mode but there's a mode that's similar to the oppo find 7a which will produce a higher megapixel photo and that is called super zoom it takes several photos of your subject and puts them together allowing you to do a super crop you have your front facing camera which i have not used too much in my 24 hours of testing and of course if you don't want to use the volume rocker to zoom in you can always do your standard pinch to zoom which works very well cyanogen mod runs beautifully on this phone it's basically a stock android experience with a lot of customization and settings such as what you just saw on the lock screen when you touch the little unlock button it will bring up five icons and you can actually customize these to be quick apps on the fly the overall experience of cyanogen mod though is just like you would find on the nexus minus the google now experience swiping down from the top right corner will bring up your toggles and your settings if you swipe that back up and swipe at the top left corner, it's going to bring up your notification center. And you can change this as well in the settings. I'm telling you, there is a lot of different things you can do with this phone. Cyanogen Mod is where it's at, and I'm addicted to it now. If you're using this phone here in the States, it's only going to run on AT&T and T-Mobile. It has a dual band Wi-Fi antenna, but even the reception from my cellular service I found has decreased with this phone. It could be a software bug, or it could be the casing on the phone itself. I'm not too sure, but I know the Wi-Fi reception on my other Android phones, even my iPhone, was much better than this phone. Cyanogen Mod allows you to change your wallpaper on your lock screen to a custom wallpaper. And I'm going to go ahead and do so in this video real quick. And it does it, for the most part, good. But here's the thing, it does not stay. After turning on and off your lock screen so many times, eventually your wallpaper just goes away and you're left with a black screen. Oh, it's also important to note, as you see here, you can tap the screen to turn on the display and if you tap the status bar, it will actually turn off the display. And it also has some of the gestures that you can find on the Oppo Find 7a, such as drawing a circle to access the camera or a V to turn on your flashlight. But back to the problem at hand, if you turn on and off the lock screen a few times, it eventually is going to turn your wallpaper black. And we'll go ahead and turn it on one more time, and now you can see my wallpaper has completely vanished. With Cyanogen Mod, you have access to a lot of different themes for customization. You also have access to sound packs, but if you load up the sound packs in the settings, you're going to see that it will not open. It says, unfortunately, themes has stopped, and there's nothing that you can do to get inside of that setting. And again, if you go into the app drawer and load up the theme store, eventually after scrolling down, it's just going to close. It will not stay open. When trying to customize this phone with different themes, it just will not tolerate it and it shuts it down. And the more you open the theme store, the quicker the shutdown will be. Another problem that I experienced in my first impressions is the call quality. When using the speaker on the front of the phone, the person on the other line did not sound very loud. Even with the volume turned all the way up, it really wasn't all that great. Here's a quick tip and trick for you guys. If you have this phone, download the Google Now Launcher or the Google Experience Launcher. You can find the APK online. Or better yet, I'll leave it in the description below. Once installed, you're basically running a Nexus-like experience, except it's going to be like on steroids because you have all the customizations and modifications of Cyanogen Mod. You also have the OK Google voice command on your home screen rather than the OK Snapdragon. OnePlus has recommended that we go through three full battery cycles before updating to the latest version of Cyanogen Mod. I'm hoping that after I get these three cycles done with an update that it gets rid of a lot of my problems that I'm having and the bugs in the Cyanogen Mod OS. Well, stay tuned for my full review and this will be after I've updated and used the phone for about three to four more weeks. So stay tuned. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment in the section below. I want to know what you want to see from my full review and follow me on all my social media networks for a more personal experience with myself and of course as always guys thank you for watching and all of your support